Sir VJ Iyer, Chief of Cardiovascular Medicine at the UB Jacobs School of Medicine. Sir, thanks so much for joining us here tonight. And I just want to start by, of course, noting that you aren't involved in any way in DeMar Hamlin's treatment. There is no official diagnosis here yet. As we mentioned, a lot of people waiting to get some type of insight um, from his doctors who are treating them there in Ohio. But we keep hearing this term being used, commotio cordis. Can you explain that? And does it seem like a possible diagnosis in this case to you as it has to so many experts out there? Uh, well, thanks for having me. Uh, commodio cordis is a condition where a violent blow to the front part of the chest, or what's called the precordial region, at a specific portion of the cardiac cycle can trigger an abnormal rhythm of the heart causing a cardiac arrest. So, uh, yeah, certainly based upon the events and uh, the television uh, replays, it certainly looks like that's a possibility. By all accounts, uh, Hamlin was a perfectly healthy 24 year old, right? Who happens to play in, in a very violent game. Are there any warning signs that can be caught beforehand? Or as I understand this condition, I mean, it can just happen to someone who is otherwise perfectly healthy because it, it has to do with the exact moment that you take a hit, right? That is correct. Uh, there are no warning signs and it is related to, first of all, it's a fairly rare condition. And it occurs, as I said, primarily because of a violent blow to the precordial area, especially to the left side of the chest at a very specific part of the cardiac cycle. Doctor, so many people are so concerned and looking for any bit of information that they can get out there. And again, not knowing exactly what happened here. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about why he was down on the field for so long. We're fortunate that he got medical attention so quickly. I mean, they have just top notch doctors and other medical professionals who are right there on the sideline. Um, but how did you process what you saw unfold on TV in terms of what the response was like and what viewers should understand about that response? Um, Clearly, you know, the, the, first, uh, the first priority in a circumstance like that is to stabilize the individual. And there are specific uh, protocols that we follow within ACLS or Advanced Cardiac Life Support, which require us to uh, resuscitate the individual, get the uh, pulse back as the first step, followed by stabilization of the airway. So there are specific steps that need to occur, and sometimes it can take a few minutes to get that, to stabilize the individual before they can be transported anywhere. The first reports that came out about Hamlin at the hospital talked about him being intubated and, and put to sleep on purpose so that they could put a breathing tube down um, to help him. What does that tell us about his treatment and what type of insight can you give us in terms of, of what's happening right now? Of course, he's going to have a, a, a great team of doctors um, watching him around the clock. Uh, typically, immediately after a cardiac arrest, it is not unusual for individuals to not be able to breathe on their own or not have complete cognitive capability to protect their airway. So it is not unusual to put them on a ventilator, uh, even if they are breathing spontaneously a little bit. So uh, that is not unusual. Uh, usually the first 24 to 48 hours is really meant for stabilizing the individual, making sure that they have their cardiac function back, and then starting to assess uh, their cognitive capabilities and their neurological recovery from this event. Doctor, I know the, the condition of, of which you spoke there, again, very, very rare, um, but I have read instances in, in which we've seen something like that, oftentimes in, in younger athletes, um, and we know of stories of, of full recoveries. I think people watching obviously want to hold out hope for the very best for DeMar Hamlin right now. Can you give us some insight on that and, and, and how sometimes th this can result in a, in a full recovery? Um, a, a lot of the recovery, uh, many, many individuals do have cardiac arrest and have complete recovery, not just of their cardiac function, but also completely intact neurologically and cognitively. A lot depends upon how soon CPR was initiated and how soon uh, defibrillation was performed to restore what is called return of spontaneous circulation. Uh, the quicker that happens, the higher the possibility of complete recovery. Yeah, I read something when you compare this condition now to maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago, it used to be very deadly, right? And now in today's day and age, and especially in an NFL game, you have people who are trained in CPR who are there. The response is very quick. We have these AED machines um, more readily available. I mean, how important has that been to get a good outcome? 
I think the performance of effective CPR and the availability of an AED are sort of the two key measures in improving survival from cardiac arrest, and we've learned that over the last 20, 30 years. So, so clearly today, as you well know, most public places have AEDs, and, and more and more, not just trained medical professionals, but also lay people are being trained in CPR. So I do think that uh, all of that helps. And in this case, obviously, there was the best medical attention that anyone could have uh, in, in these circumstances. Finally, doctor, and I'm almost out of time, but j just real quick, um, in terms of what is most important right now for the doctors, obviously, is, is treating this 24-year-old. In terms of the, the public and when we're going to get an update, how would you expect that to play out and what we may learn from his doctors when and if they're able to give us an update? Uh, you know, uh, there's no timetable on these things. I think we have to respect the privacy of the individual and the family, and the doctors will make a decision on when it's most appropriate to release any information based upon not just uh, their desires, but also the desires of the family. Absolutely. So many people thinking about DeMar Hamlin right now and his family and his teammates and, and so many others. Dr. Vijay Iyer is Chief of Cardiovascular Medicine at UB's Medical School. Thanks so much for your time, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you.